that means it deals with promoting competition in the innovation market by rewarding those who innovate on the other hand the competition act is promoting innovation exposed and what does that mean that means by protecting the product market where that innovation has come to play a role and therefore the both these two laws actually deal with protecting innovation but at different stages and they sort of are complementary to each other because the purpose that both these two laws serve is promotion of innovation and protection of the consumers offering variety of goods and services to the people the patent system as i see is a carefully crafted system that thrives only when there is free competition and there is freedom to exploit innovation however it's important to understand that exploit that free exploitation of ideas is the fundamental rule to which the patent right is an exception okay so anything that sort of impinges on the free exploitation of ideas on monetization of non patented products would be something that the cci may be concerned with now the conflict between the two laws that we uh, mostly talk about one granting exclusivity and the other concerned with making things available to make the markets more competitive would seem to be little when we see that the intellectual property laws provides a bouquet of rights whereas the competition law comes into play not to diminish that right but primarily to see that the exercise of that right has been done in a reasonable manner and reasonableness being tested from the point of view of whether or not the conduct was necessary for the protection of those those rights one of the difficulties that we have in this interface is in general the patent rights are considered to be immune to competition law violation as long as the exercise of that right is within the scope of the patent in other words a patentee need not be concerned about antitrust law violation or competition law violation so long as the exercise of that right is within the scope of the patent that he is exploiting and for instance asking for royalty beyond the patent term okay similarly tying a patented product with an unpatented product okay these could be cases which could very well be dealt not necessarily under the competition law but as a matter of patent misuse within the patent act itself and for a very very long time even in the us which has a history of antitrust law for more than 100 and more than 120 years or so antitrust did not necessarily impinge into the functioning of the ip and it was presumptively held that so long as the patentee is well within the scope of the patent he would have an immunity uh, to antitrust intervention 
On the other hand, the Federal Trade Commission of the US had been advocating for a very long time for a quick look and a presumptive, uh, and, 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 and a presumptive determination that if there is any violation of the antitrust law, then there need not be a detailed investigation or a rule of reason analysis in order to determine whether or not there is violation and there should be a quick look analysis to that. However, the US Supreme Court in 2013 really reversed the jurisprudence in this regard in the case of FTC versus activists, which was a pay for delay case, where the US Supreme Court said that the reverse payment settlements may violate antitrust laws when, uh, yeah, may violate antitrust laws and all facts have to be seen and the analysis has to be made based on the rule of reason. The minority opinion, the dissenting minority opinion, however, stated that because a patent provides the right to exclude, a patentee must be entitled to pay a rival to stop challenging its patent and stay off the market. So long as the exclusion does not extend beyond the patent term. But that was not what the majority opinion in the Supreme Court held. The Supreme Court held that when you indulge in a conduct that is anti-competitive, the scope of the patent will not be a ground uh, for uh, providing any kind of immunity. In Europe also, this is the view and there have been at least three decisions that I know of. Uh, one is the Lundbeck, the second is the Servier, and before that the AstraZeneca case. In all these three cases, it has been clearly held that the scope of the patent does not entitle the patentee to violate the competition laws. Before I really go into explaining how exactly the provisions of the Competition Act play out in the exercise of that rights. I just want to make one small observation and I see that as fundamental to the understanding also of the Patent Act in promoting innovation and competition in the market. We all know that a patent grants you an exclusive right. We also know that those rights are alienable in the sense that those rights could be assigned or those rights could be licensed. However, almost all patent laws, including that of India, do provide an opportunity to the third parties to challenge any patent that has been granted. And this challenge right cannot be taken away. This challenge right is very much a part of the Patent Act which is not alienable. However, in specific circumstances, maybe you could have a contractual arrangement with the party and subject to your position in the market, the competition authorities may interfere. But what I want to emphasize here is the existence of this challenge right to third parties is fundamental to the understanding of how the scope of the patent right or, 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 or the grant of the intellectual property uh, can remain uh, uh, a probabilistic uh, kind of a, uh, uh, status to the patent holder because till such time it is not litigated in a court of law, all patents are probabilistic. The mere fact that the patent has been granted and it is in the register of the controller does not ipso facto mean that the patent is necessarily valid and enforceable. The third parties always have that right to claim either non-infringement or to say that the patent itself is invalid. So this particular challenge right, I think, is, is at the core uh, of even the Patent Act itself and has a huge real role to play when the competition law interacts with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the rights of the patent holder. Now, just to give you a brief idea about 
the two or three sections of the Competition Act that actually uh, can be invoked uh, to question the exercise of the rights holders' right. The, uh, as my previous speakers have already spoken, uh, so the Competition Act basically has two enforcement provisions. The first is, the first prohibits anti-competitive agreements. And the second prohibits misuse of dominant position. We have another provision that deals with combinations. So uh, I'm not going to talk about that because that basically is a very different kind of an assessment where uh, the assessment essentially hinges on the determination as to whether the, uh, the coming together of two companies by way of mergers, amalgamation, uh, or acquisition is, is likely to create a coordinated effect which may have a deleterious impact on the market, the prices, the consumer choice, et cetera, amongst two previous competitors or two entities, or, and whether such uh, combination is likely to create such amount of market power that the, the combined entity would be now in a position to determine the level of output, determine the level of price, et cetera. So that provision deals with combination. So the main enforcement provisions are the anti-competitive agreements and the abuse of dominant position. Now the anti-competitive agreement has two limbs. The first limb is agreement between competitors in the market. That means those entities which, which deal with substitutable goods or service, okay, where they operate at the same horizontal level of the markets. And the other agreement could be between entities who operate at different levels of the market. For instance, a manufacturer and his distributor would be operating at different levels of the market, whereas two competitors for a product are operating at the same level of the market. Now, this is one provision. The second provision is, enforcement provision is abuse of dominance, as I said, and the position of dominance uh, under the Competition Act is, is is a concept that is essentially premised again uh, on the kind of market power that a single entity or, a, or an entity belonging to a particular group has, and that is determined with reference to a variety of factors uh, of which one or any of the factors the CCI may take into account to consider the position of dominance such as the market share, uh, the, the, the position, uh, the market structure, uh, the, the entry barriers to that market, the countervailing buying powers of the consumers, uh, or a monopoly granted by the state or a statute, things of that sort. So uh, a variety of factors are, factors are considered, and those factors have been given in the act itself, but the essential determining point to make an entity a dominant entity or not hinges on the ability of that entity to act independent of its competitors in the market or the consumers in the market. So that would amount to a position of dominance. Now under these two provisions, provisions of anti-competitive agreement and provision of uh, abuse of dominant position, all the cases that the CCI does, including the cases involving IP, are dealt. Now, for instance, to just to give you an example, uh, under the horizontal agreement, where there is an agreement between competitors, I would classify, even though we did not have any such case in India as of, as of now, is uh, the, the cases where the innovator companies uh, pay uh, the generics uh, to delay their entry into the market, okay? Now, since, the generic entry is likely to funnel huge competition and exert competitive pressure on the innovator, uh, the, 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 the consequence of which would be a, a drastic reduction in, the, in the, the cost of the uh, product that the innovator was hitherto selling in the market. Uh, uh, there have been cases in the US and the, in the EU particularly uh, where the innovators have really paid huge sums of money, uh, both in cash and so I, I'm being told my, my moderator to sort of, I'll just limit it. 
uh, uh, being told uh, to sort of, uh, they are being paid huge sums of money to delay their entry. Such kinds of cases would fall uh, under the uh, uh, prohibition of agreement amongst entities operating in the same level of the market. Similarly, you could have cases where uh, a patent owner, uh, for instance, tied a particular product implicating his patent with something that was unpatented or, or something on which that patent holder did not have that kind of a right or imposed certain licensing restrictions with regards to grant backs, with regards to, uh, for instance, field of use, etc. So these kinds of agreements could be dealt uh, under uh, the, the, the vertical agreements uh, uh, prohibition under the competition law. And the third would be uh, the abuse of dominance where, uh, for instance, the CCI has done in cases like standard essential patents, uh, I don't need to describe what standard essential patents is, my previous speakers have already done that, but the moment a patent uh, becomes, uh, or a patent owner claims that his patents reads onto a standard, and, which, and, and the practice of that standard is essential uh, for entry into the market, uh, because that standard only provides the interoperable uh, 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 framework, such patents become standard essential patents. In India, uh, to my understanding, such a patent would actually make a patent holder uh, a dominant entity, especially uh, uh, because there is no workaround of that patent available in the market. I am aware of the position in the US where even an ACP holder uh, is not deemed to be uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a dominant position or a monopolistic position and several other factors have to be considered but what has been our experience thus far here and, and I think our law is more aligned to the EU jurisprudence where also uh, holding of an SAP has been determined in several cases uh, to, to make them a dominant entity. So uh, these are the provisions under which uh, the Competition Commission of India can look into the, the exercise of market power, whether, whether the patent holder or the rights holder has uh, imposed uh, terms and conditions uh, for exploitation of those patents in a manner that is unreasonable and that is not necessary for the protection of such rights. Probably I'll get some